Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1 is actually a pretty interesting chapter. It consists of five sentences and 23 verses. So they're very long sentences. They're very complex. Paul was pretty pro prolific with his... Pro That's a, a certain grammar term. The term they're, they're very interesting. As we go into it, we're going to look at verse 7. So this is the start of the third sentence. The previous one was all about God's, God's grace and how he predestined that Jesus Christ would adopt believers to, be, to, to glorify God, God in heaven. So let's read, read verse 7, Ephesians 1, verse 7. In whom we have re redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom, and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, that he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both that are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the, to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. Christ. And that's where we'll be stopping there. We're going to be going over 7 through 12. As we look at the first, first verse, it's talking about how Jesus came to earth to pay for our sins. As sins in whom we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, and the purpose and the reason that was uh, that occurred that God, Jesus gave his his own self for for us is by the grace, the, by the richness of grace that God had that Jesus had. There's also another, another verse in the Bible that talks about this in Hebrew n Hebrews nine chapter verse twelve. Neither by the blood of goats or caves cows, but by his own blood. He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. In Romans 3.24, it states also clearly, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption of Jesus Christ. So that's the first point that Paul makes in this sentence, and that he's sentence. And his whole goal is to point us to God's glory. Glory. It's a it seems to be the end goal of every sentence in the first chapter of Ephesians. As we, as we, we'll read verse 8 and 9 together. Wherewith he had abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. So here we have Jesus. He's talk, uh, Paul, he's talking about how we have been revealed the mis the mystery. Now, what is this mystery? I looked I looked it up a little bit, and in Romans chapter sixteen twenty five, it says, "Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began." So this mystery was mystery was kept from Moses, from Abraham, from many of the prophets. Prophets and the Bible even says in Second Timothy, verse one nine, who hath saved us and called us with unholy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So this mystery, it was mystery. It was it was a will of God before the world began, and it was up till Jesus that no one knew exactly how God was going to redeem mankind. But now we've been revealed this mystery, and that is Jesus Christ, who was crucified and risen from the grave. grave. And it says here that we've been revealed this mystery by God's wisdom and his prudence. Prudence. There. As we, as we read verse 10, we're going to examine the, the next phrase that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, 
he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. The, reason, the dispensation of the fullness of time means at the perfect moment. And at the perfect moment, God will, God will rap, rapture all the, those who believe on him, believe on him, and both, on, both that have been alive and those are who are alive now. As we, now, here, here in Colossians 1, chapter 20, and being made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. So, so all those that previously Paul had came, probably came to a, there were a few people who thought that when a Christian died that he wouldn't be able to partake of, of the resurrection, well, of the rapture because they thought God's kingdom would come to, come to earth within that time and they didn't know. So basically what Paul is saying that even though they're dead, they will rise again and come, rise again and be part of God's eternal kingdom. As we, as we look on in verse number 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Do you hear what Paul is saying? That God, that we were predestined, that we were predestined to receive an inheritance once we go through, go through this life and we're rap raptured, then we receive the inheritance. Uh, inheritance Later in the same chapter, it talks about the Spirit, which is an earnest of the inheritance. It, give, it acts as a conscience. It also give, allows us to pray to God. God it intercedes for us, but, and also gives a peace which passes all understanding. But the full inheritance is given to us after the rapture. rapture. And the Apostle Paul is making this very, trying to make this all very clear because he's coming up to one big idea. As we read in verse number 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. The, the whole reason that Jesus came to earth to die for our sins was because, because of his grace, yes, but why, but why did he have that grace to die for us? For us, as we, as we see all the way down at the end of this sentence in verse number 12, it was for his glory, for God's glory. And it's, it's not necessarily, not, not the biggest, big purpose for saving us was not for the sake of saving us, but instead of for the sake of glorifying God who is in heaven. That, that, that was a whole purpose purpose of it and anything that is not to the glory of God that is that God otherwise God would not do do such a thing which honestly when it, honestly when when we accept that fact it makes us much more reverent of God because we then get a much bigger appreciation for his mercy mercy so we have learned that learned way back in verse number seven that God gave Jesus came to earth to show the richness of his grace. Verse number 8 and 9, we are given, we've been given the knowledge of his will by God's wisdom and prudence, prudence so that we can tell others about the gospel, a uh, gospel as well, and work hard here on earth to, sh to allow more believers to, kn to know of Jesus Christ. And then in verse 9, oh, verse 10, that, that at the perfect moment, God will, rap, God will rapture all the, people, all the people who believe on him, the true believers, and they will be united with Christ. Christ, death cannot separate us from God. God, Let, also in 11, that it is then we will receive the inheritance. The inheritance being a relationship with God forever. And that, and that will be the biggest reward we can ever give. It is the only reason we are alive today is to glorify God forever and ever and ever. And that, and that is verse number 12, to glorify God forever and ever. Thank, thank you so much.